Today we're going to be looking at coils and threading and other fun things that you can do with a helix. And so we'll get started by creating a basic coil and then we'll create some threads and or some fun helix shapes. And so initially when you start off using the coil or wanting to create a coil, the easiest way is to start off with a sketch and I'm going to do it on the XY plane. Now on that XY plane, oh, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and change my settings here. So under Tools, Document Settings, I'm going to change my units from centimeters to inches. So we'll be working in inches this time. And so we'll then choose Sketch, and we'll draw a line along the Y axis. So that line along the Y axis, and we're going to select it and make it a center line. So that's going to become our center line of our coil. I also need to draw a circle and that circle is the actual coil wire diameter and so the coil wire diameter that we're going to create and it'll be dimensioned and we're going to do it as 0.125 so it's actually going to be pretty thick at eighth inch we could actually back it down to a sixteenth 0.0625 and the third item that we have to dimension is we need to dimension how far it is away from the center line. So we pick the center line, we pick the circle, and we get a dimension, as you can see, called a linear diameter. And so what it's telling us is the diameter from center to center of the object is going to be 0.415. We can adjust that to 0.375. So that way it'll be 3 eighths of an inch from center point to center point of the coil wire. So if you needed an interior dimension of, let's say, 3 eighths of an inch, we would have to add a sixteenth of an inch to that size. So we'd have to go 0.375. And as you know, we can do math inside here. So we could add plus 0.0625. And that way, the inside diameter of the coil would be 0.375, and we need two halves, because it's based on the center, to get to that uh, coil diameter. So if we use the coil diameter, we'll then have the 375 as the true dimension on the inside of the coil. So now we have our coil wire diameter, our center line, the dimension of how big the coil is going to be, and we can finish our sketch. The coil command is actually really easy to use. One of the things that I've noticed as the software has progressed is that it's become more intelligent about automatically selecting things such as center lines and profiles. You don't have to do as much pre-selection uh, of the process. All right. So there's three methods of basically, well, we could, or there should be four, I guess, but there's basically three methods of creating a helix. We can go pitch and revolution, which is the pitch is the distance between one uh, peak to the next peak. Revolutions are how many turns we have. Revolution in the overall height, so that's the number of turns and the, the height of the object. Or the third one is the pitch and the height, which is the distance between the peaks and the height. So the one that most people use is revolutions and height because that's the data they typically have. So right now I've got it set up with seven revolutions in one inch. And again, we're dealing with a sixteenth of an inch object, so a one inch high coil is not that uh, not too far. In, in that environment. Now we can also taper it, which means you can have a tapered coil. And tapers work really well when you're actually creating threads. And we'll get into that here in just a minute. Because if we want an airtight or a watertight connection, we need to taper the threads based on the National Pipe Threading, NPT, uh, settings that are uh, specified in the Machinist Handbook. So you can go and get that data um, from the machinist handbook for the tapering information. Closing and closing the start and the end basically puts a half loop in. Um, 
a right angle so it basically gives a hook that you can hook the end to start and or the end. I'm going to leave it clean right now so you can see what happens. We choose OK. And so you can see the coil that's been created with the starting and the ending point here. And so we've got a good distance between each of the coils and so forth. Uh, and a lot of questions that always come up is, can I show the coil compressed and expanded? Not as a part. In a dynamic assembly, you can. And so there are some tools in dynamic simulation that allows you to uh, account for the compression and expansion of a spring. But in a basic part, you'll either want to design the spring open, like I have, or compressed. And that's your call based on the design that you're making. If you want to get into the uh, extremely heavy duty uh, structure of the simulation, which includes more force information and more design criteria, you can go ahead and move, move into that realm. But for uh, the basic drawing environment, uh, we leave either the open spring or a compressed spring. So it's pretty simple to do, creating the spring. Now what if we wanted to create some screw threads? Well, we'll start another object here. Let's go ahead and just hit uh, File and New Part. And double check our tool document settings that it's back to inches. And begin a sketch on the XY plane. Draw our center line. But in reality, we won't need a center line. And I'll explain why. Because when we're creating a screw thread or other, like an auger or anything like that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a cylinder. And that cylinder is going to have the object around it. So let's go ahead and create a uh, 1.5 inch diameter cylinder. And that cylinder we are going to extrude two and a half inches. Okay, so now we've got a cylinder. We now need to create a cutting tool. And so, like working on a lathe in a machine shop, we're going to be actually cutting the threads into the cylinder. So, think of it just like watching a video on YouTube of somebody cutting threads in an aluminum or in a steel uh, cylinder. And that's exactly what we're going to do, but in the design environment. So I need to create a new sketch. And that sketch is going to need to be created uh, on a specific plane. So I'm going to go back to the browser, and I can choose one of three planes. Well, XY is not the right plane. XZ would work, and YZ will work. And what those are, those are perpendicular to that XY plane, which allows us to create our cutting tool. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the YZ plane because it's vertical. So now we've got a YZ plane sketch. So that YZ plane is actually in the middle of the object. And one of the cool features is that we're able to visually cut the cylinder in half doesn't physically do it, but visually we're able to do that. So we can see what it looks like uh, when we're creating the screw threads themselves, or the cutting tool. So the cutting tool that I'm going to create, again, perpendicular to the cylinder side, I'm going to go ahead and create a tool that's going to cut in at an angle. Now I did not look this up in the machinist handbook, but the machinist handbook will give you all the angles, the distances, the pitch information, which is the distance from the point to the next point and so forth to get proper threading. And so the idea is that you need to look up that data uh, in a, a source to get the proper design. This is about the process of how to create it. Once we created this shape, I need to dimension it. And so we're going to go ahead and do a 60 degree angle. 
but notice that that didn't work out real well. So I need to dimension this line here, and we're going to make this at 0.25. And uh-oh, now it's in the part. What do we do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and choose OK to stop whatever other command I'm in, and just grab my object and move it. Okay, one of the cool things about the software is that we're able to grab anything that is not formally dimensioned yet and move it. We can add additional dimensions, like for example, I can dimension the point to the edge and say I want to make that 0.125 starting point. Okay, so we're actually going to have a little bit of a shoulder here and then we're going to run the threads down. But you can notice that the thread isn't accurately in the center yet. Well, we know that that's 0.25. We need to add a dimension from this point to the end and make that 0.125 or half of the 0.25. Now we've got a pretty clean V shape. The other dimension that we need is the depth of cut. So how deep is that thread going to get cut? But I can't project anything to this outer edge. I could dimension it to this point here. But I could also just use the project geometry and project the top edge of the cylinder and choose dimension from the point to the top edge of the cylinder and we can make the depth of cut point 125 also. And so now we've got a v-shaped 60 degree angle that's going to be cut in our object and again this is it's going to start midway so this is not what you want to have on the end of your object. This is this end of the object is actually where the bolt head is going to be or the screw head is going to be with the threading. The other end is going to be the end that actually has the threads cut all the way out of the object. So now that I've created the shape of the cutting tool we're going to finish the sketch and we'll use the coil command. This time it doesn't know where the axis is so I need to pick the cylinder to give us an axis. And it doesn't like that, so I might need to actually use the axis command first to create an axis and then use the coil command, selecting the axis, and now you can see that the coil command works. Now use the last data that we had, so we know that this is going to be 2.50, and the number of threads per inch so if it's 10 threads per inch and we're cutting 2.25 okay I'm gonna need or 2.5 inches I'm gonna need 25 cuts so it's 10 threads per inch height is 22.5 inches I'm gonna need 25 revolutions and again for it to work this cutting tool can't cut upon itself so making it really giant and large is not going to be a good thing. So let's see what happens with our cutting tool here and how it cuts. And notice that it's going to cut all the way out of the cylinder. And this time on the bottom, instead of joining it, I'm going to choose the cut tool because I want this to cut into the cylinder. And choose OK. All right, so create foil the coil feature failed. Why? Because the shape that I have cutting is too large and it will hit upon itself again. So I'm going to have to edit and do fewer revolutions. So if we do 20 revolutions and choose OK, still not going to work. So again, select our axis, profile is selected, 15 revolutions and so I'm looking at what these angles look like and see if that is going to work and it does. So this happens to be 15 revolutions and this looks really clean. Now it's a little bit too pointy in the bottom. Typical threads will have a flat surface on the bottom also but I want to again wanted to give you the thought of how that can be created. And so you can see how the thread started here in the middle ran all the way down and cut itself all the way out the bottom so you actually have a starter thread 
to thread this object up. And so on the opposite end here, on this end here, we can put a, a bolt head or a screw head, so forth. And it's flat, so we can extrude from there. Now if we do this a little bit bigger, and you have a bigger cutting tool, you can easily see how we could create an auger to move material. And so just by changing the cutting tool, we can change the profile shape of how this looks, whether it's rounded, and you could create an auger with a rounded coil also. Now, what's interesting is that you can go in and edit the shape of the cutting tool and recut it. And so just like we did with the sweep and other designs, we have the full editing capability with the coil development system also. That basically wraps up the concept of coils and screw threads and augers and again just the different material cuts that you can make. Remember using the machinist handbook to get the proper data for the cutting tool is the key for success. As you saw in the video, my cutting tool, I just rough sketched it in and made some guesses at distances and values and we had to adjust the number of threads per inch. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.